Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another Real Madrid preview. This is the preview to Hatafe against Real Madrid. The game that was postponed that should have been match day 20, I want to say, um, or 19, one of the two, um, but. This is the game that I think determines whether Real Madrid have what it takes to win a league. I, I genuinely think so because I was worried about this game because Hatafe are a good side and going to the Colosseum is going to be tough and they have been playing pretty alright. But after this game, you have got Atletico Girona and RB Leipzig and how do Real Madrid deal with this game does Real Madrid you know just act like you know what it might not matter does Ancelotti act like it does not matter because look like I said three big games after this I'm not saying this isn't a big game I'm just saying right does Ancelotti say look let's start Dani Ceballos let's start Brahim Diaz. Let's start Jose Lu. You know, does he do that? Does he decide, look, I'm going to start the players that might not get many game time in this game? Because we did see Dani Sabao start against Las Palmas. And that was a surprise. And he didn't play well at all. So are we going to see that again? Are we going to see this game being... Not a game that is necessarily taken importantly, but rather more as a rest before three big games in a row. Because if you're going to play your stars, if you're going to play Bellingham, if you're going to play Vinicius, Rodrigo, Tramene, Rudiger, Carvajal in this game, you have to still play them in the next three. They have to play against... Atletico Madrid at the Bernabeu. They have to play against Girona at the Bernabeu. They have to play against Leipzig at the Red Bull Arena or wh whatever they call it these days. They have to play. So, do you sacrifice some of these players and say, look, we're going to drop you for this game. And if we draw, if we lose, then okay, so be it. But we've got three big games coming up. Personally, I would not do that. You know, I know we've got a couple of big games, right? But it's four games in the space of, what, 12 days, right? That's a game every three days. I know it's going to be very tiring for the players, right? I know it's going to be very tiring for the players, but they've just come off what was a week off between Almeria and Las Palmas. What was, again, then, a very tough few week really from the Supercopa until the Copa del Rey you know the two games against Atletico they were played within the space of a week really so it's going to be tough of course I know but you cannot take risk at this point of the season and you have to go out and you have to go there with the mentality, the mindset that we are going to want to start our best players. We are going to come here to win. And it's possible. It is. Now, let's talk about Hetafe because they've played alright. Let's look at their home form. You know, away from home, they've recently lost to Osasuna. Um, at the time of recording, they have yet to play against Granada. So, you know, who knows. They have recently lost at home to Rio Vallecano. They drew Atletico away. Um, they beat Sevilla away. They beat Valencia at home. Um, I will skip the last Palmas away defeat. Um, they beat Almeria at home. They beat Cadiz at home. They drew Real Betis at home. They drew Villarreal at home in September. I'm going back too far back now. Uh, at home they've played well they've actually played pretty well you know this season they've managed to keep Barcelona at bay with a draw um, 
have they even lost at home this season? I don't think they have. I've seen draws. They've beat Osasuna at home. They've beat Alaves at home. They genuinely have not lost a single game at home. I don't think. In the league, of course, they lost to Sevilla in the Copa del Rey at home. But in the league, they have yet to lose at home. So, un- unless obviously Granada can win, which I find it unlikely. But basically, they've played really, really, really well at home this season. Um, as for Real Madrid, look. So far still, um, that one defeat um, to Atletico away. But, you know, struggling against Las Palmas. Struggling against Almeria, but... You know, struggling against Mallorca and Alaves, but somehow finding a way to get the job done. And that is important. Away from home, you know, games like Real Betis um, and Sevilla have been difficult. But except for that, still top of the Liga, of course, at the time of recording, Girona are yet to play. They've got Celta Vigo away, and if they win... They've got a game in hand and they're one point ahead. So it makes this game a must win. It makes this game really, really a must win. Hatafe, look, some of the players, um, arguably probably the most known player, Mason Greenwood. They've got Enes Unal. They've got ex Real Madrid ball, Herr Mayoral. Um, They've got Anthony Lozano. They've got some good attackers, right? They've got Jai Mata as well. They've got five attackers there that will cause problems. Um, and, you know, it's down to, you know, who starts this game. Because if you um, look at the last couple of games and Jose Bordalas, um, who is obviously the manager, has typically gone with a 4 4 2 with. Unal and Mayoral up top with Greenwood on the wing, um, which I assume usually is the left wing, maybe the right wing as well. Um, maybe. Um, but they've got Dominguez Duarte, a solid centre back. They've got Maximovic going in the midfield. Ex Mariba, remember him? Ex Barcelona. They've got Juan Mila Tassa as well, by the way. Ex Real Madrid as well. Um, he is. Actually out on loan from Real Madrid, a striker. Um, so going forward, they've got a lot of players. They've got Jenny at the back, Diego Rico, um, Gaston Alvarez, Damien Suarez, Omar Alderete, John Patrick, Fabrizio, not Romano, and Jaleri. Um, David Soraya, who's a good keeper, Juan Iglesias, Carlos Alenia, Oscar Rodriguez. You know, these are good players. Um, Stefan Mitrovic this is a side that if I look at the team they are probably top 10 definitely I would argue they have got probably like the 7th or 8th best team in the league I genuinely think so they are playing really well they've got a good team they've got good attackers they've got players who can cause problems and win games by themselves in the midfield you know you're looking at Maximovic um, you're looking at John Patrick. You're looking at Ilex Mariba. Um, attack. They can go with anyone they want. Um, but of course, they play a two-man midfield. So it's probably going to be Maximovic and I want to say maybe John Patrick. Front line, they've got many options. Defensively, is decent as well. This is going to be a tricky game. They've not lost at home this season. They've not lost at home this season. That's an incredible stat, by the way. That is an incredible stat. But let me go through the Real Madrid starting eleven that I would put out. Ingo, look, Lunin um, had a bit of a collision um, with Sorry Kabar, if I'm not wrong, um, in the last game against Las Palmas. Um, I think he's alright, nothing serious. Um, but I think this switching the keepers after each game strategy works. So I'll put Kepa back in. Sure, why not? Let Kepa start. The back line, no changes. I've got Carvajal. I've brought Nacho back in. Obviously, the last game, I thought that Traumani would start at centre-back next to Rudiger, but Nacho started 
actually did pretty well, I would say. Rudiger has to play. The change I will make is Frangasia off. I would start Mendy. Now, Frangasia would suit a game against Almeria. He would suit a game against Las Palmas. But, Hatafe essentially play a 4-4-2. Two attacking st- players who, is their, who are their strikers. And Greenwood on the wing and another winger. So they've got basically four attackers, right? Two on the wings, two up top. I think if we play Frank Garcia, we are going to leave ourselves very exposed at the back. So I would start Furlong Mendy for this game. If we need to push forward in the second half, bring Frank Garcia. But I would start with Mendy because they would try to exploit us. They would try to get at us. And if we start Frank Garcia, we start Carvajal, we leave ourselves with basically two at the back against four. So you're bound to lose some goals and you're going to concede. So I would start Mendy. I would be really, really, really careful there. Tromini has to start. Defensive midfielder is needed. Um, I don't buy into this. Oh, you know, you don't need a defensive midfielder when you've got Rudiger and Nacho and Kepa. Of course, you still need a defensive midfielder. That's why it's four. The midfield next to him, I'll go Valverde. And I'll go Luka Modric. Look, Tony Cruz played the full 90 against Las Palmas. I would play Modric for this one. And Sabayos played um, for majority of the game before coming off of Valverde. I would start Fede Valverde. Kamavinga on the bench can come on if we need some extra legs. Tony Cruz on the bench. Sabayos on the bench. Totally fine. Bellingham back in the team, of course, after his suspension. He's free now. I would start him. And the front two, Vinicius Jr. has to start. Rodrigo, I want him to find some form. I would start him. Jose Lu again. If you need something going forward, throw Jose Lu on for Rodrigo. Sure. Bring a target man in the box. Why not? Brahim Diaz, bench. Arda Gula. Look, I don't see him start at all. I see him maybe coming on with 10 minutes to go again. But that is part of the process, really. And, okay, let's say Arda Gula is fully fit. Where does he play? I, I don't see him starting ahead of Bellingham. No. I don't see him starting ahead of Vinicius Jr. No. So realistically, is he going to start ahead of Rodrigo? I don't see so. Because then you would have a creative midfielder in Ardegula. You would have realistically an attacking midfielder in Bellingham who can play as a striker, really, or a false nine. And you've got a winger who likes to cut in these days and play um, slightly more centrally. It just doesn't feel right with so many creative players when you don't really have a target man. Whereas Rodrigo, you could switch the system up and put him in the middle and put him as the target man. Although he does like to move to the wide. And I would bring on Hoselu. I would bring on Artegula just to see Artegula, you know, put some crosses in and create some opportunities for Hoselu. Really? That's the same about Diaz. You know, what is Brahim Diaz going to offer if he starts ahead of Rodrigo? Nothing. So, I would start Rodrigo for this game. Score prediction. Look. Like I said, Hatafe haven't lost a single game at the Colosseum this season. It's going to be tough. I'm going to back Real Madrid. I'm going to say 3-2 Real Madrid. I see goals. I see Hatafe fighting. But I just want to believe that Real Madrid will give more and we'll find a way but let me know what our thoughts are down below hope you guys have enjoyed today's video if you remember this did subscribe to the channel is on already and i'll see you guys in the next one peace